if there is no God, what happens? Greg Locke wants to tell us, but let's be honest, Greg doesn't know reality from a hole in the ground. So let's go watch him fail. Pastor Greg Locke is really convinced that his and only his God is real. Of course, if you asked him why he thinks that, he has nothing but blind faith and wishful thinking, all emotion, no intellect, but he's a religious apologist, so that's kind of a given, isn't it? Because the religious never bother to think about what they're saying. That's because what they're saying is stupid, and to admit that their beliefs are dumb, well, that just might hurt their feelings, wouldn't it? Anyhow, Greg is about to lay some religious wisdom on us, which is to say, absurd nonsense dressed up in Sunday finery. This ought to be good. Hey guys, Pastor Greg Locke here. So often people say, what if you're wrong? about this whole Jesus situation? What if you're wrong about really needing a savior? What if you're wrong about God? Well, let me ask you this. What if I am? And off we're about to go into Pascal's wager, which has been soundly debunked time and time again. But I guess we can't expect someone like Greg Locke to know that, or really to care. So it's a legitimate question asked of an illegitimate preacher because it takes more than blind faith and wishful thinking to answer intellectually. So, let's see Greg fail, and I'll explain why it's a good question along the way. You see, if there is no heaven, if there is no hell, if the Bible is nothing more than a book of fanciful fairy tales, then when I die, I die and I've lost nothing. But if Jesus is the only way to heaven, and if heaven and hell are real... And that's where your mistake is because Pascal's wager is a false dichotomy. It allows only two choices, either no God of any kind, or the exact God that you believe in. There are no alternatives. And unfortunately for Greg here, that's plainly not the case, because there have been thousands upon thousands of gods that man has made up for himself to worship just playing the percentages game since absolutely none of them have any more evidence that they are real than any other, the odds that Greg picked the exact right one out of the many thousands of other possible gods is minuscule. And that assumes that man has discovered them all, which of course we couldn't have. How many potential gods might there be out there that we haven't dreamed up? the number of conceivable gods is almost infinite. What are the odds that Greg got the right one on the first try? And if you got the wrong one, and a different competing god is actually real, then you're headed off to their version of hell along with the rest of us. So it isn't that nothing happens. That's an absurd claim. And if you do have to make a choice as to whether you receive Jesus or not, then when you die, if that's true, then you've lost everything. If Jesus is real. But if Krishna is real, then you're going to go to Naraka, the realm of Yama, where you will be tortured for all eternity. Or you could go to the Egyptian version of hell, as described in the books of the Netherworld, where you will be burned in an oven and forced to swim in your own blood, while Shesmu, the god of the wine press, squashes your fluids from your body. The possibilities of where you might spend your eternity suffering forever are virtually endless. Christians don't get to be automatically right. You see, you can argue with me about a lot of things. You can argue about prophecy, you can argue about biblical accuracy, scientific accuracy, the historical nature of the Bible. You can argue about a lot of things, but there's one thing you can never argue with, and that's what I know to be true, that Jesus did in me nearly 27 years ago. No, you don't know that to be true. You believe it, you don't know it. You have attributed a specific cause to some event that you have no objective means of identifying the cause for. For all you know, Thor did it, and you've spent the past 27 years smearing his actions in his face by worshipping the wrong god. But the religious never think about that. They pick the religion that makes them feel the best, 
mostly the religion that they were raised with and indoctrinated into, or which was commonplace in the area that they grew up in, and assume that has to be the right one, because that's the one that they know best. And anyone with more than one active brain cell to jiggle together knows how absurd that actually sounds. Just because you're familiar with a concept, just because you like a concept, or find comfort in a concept, that doesn't make the concept true. You say personal experience is not important. Personal experience is everything. Only if you verify that your personal experience accurately represents reality. And you can't, and you don't care. Because there are tons of people of various religions out there making the same kind of claims that you do about their gods, insisting that their gods must be right, because they had this experience that they can't objectively verify either, and you're all doing the exact same thing. And you all believe that your god, and only your god, is real. Do you not see how problematic that is? So at the end of the day, if I'm wrong, I've really lost nothing. I've enjoyed my life, helped a lot of people, stirred up some controversy, and I go to the ground and rot. And you've wasted the only life that you actually have preaching a message of nonsense and misleading people who have also wasted their lives based on the garbage that you spew. You've accomplished nothing useful. Nothing that will actually advance humanity because you spent it with your nose in a book of mythology. You're a waste, Greg. A complete waste. And you don't even know it. But if you're wrong, hell's real. Hell's hot. There's a holy, righteous God with whom you have to do. So you say. Now, how about you back that up with anything more than flapping lips and delusion? So if I'm wrong, I've lost nothing. If you're wrong, You've lost everything. If you're wrong and another religion is right, then you're going to fry just like everyone else who doesn't follow that religion. If all religions are wrong, which is what all of the evidence we have points to, then you've wasted the only life that you actually have on a fairy tale. You've harmed every single person whose mind you've poisoned with your delusions. But if we're wrong, might we go to hell? Sure. And if we do, we go gladly because we followed the evidence and any god who doesn't provide objectively verifiable evidence for its own existence doesn't deserve our belief or our reverence in the first place. But that assumes that whatever god might exist thinks that way. Maybe they're just sending people who worship the opposition to hell. Maybe they're fine with people exercising the mental acumen that they were given and they just don't suffer fools very well. Maybe we're fine, and you're going to hell. Because it's all a crapshoot in the end if we have no rational way of determining which god or gods are real and which ones are imaginary. From where we're sitting, they all look made up, and we're going to treat them as such until proven otherwise. And I'm here to tell you, Jesus is not a way to heaven. He's the one and only way to heaven. You need a savior. His name is Jesus. So if there is no God, no harm, no foul. If there is a God, then you're in a heap of trouble. Not so much, but this is why Pascal's wager fails so absurdly, because the religious refuse to acknowledge the problems inherent in its assertions. Because the whole argument is fallacious on its face. You'd have to be a fool to take any of it seriously. But I guess we are talking about Greg here, so being a fool is a given. Ultimately, this is just an emotional scam, meant to prey on the fears of the believers, not the rationality of the skeptics. The skeptics are just going to look at you and say, sure, and we've got some farmland to Gehenna to sell you, because none of this makes any rational sense whatsoever. But the religious aren't rational, they're emotional, they believe what makes them feel good, and if reality isn't comforting, they pretend it doesn't exist. But they're wrong, laughably wrong, and arguments like Pascal's wager demonstrate just how ridiculous they really are and how little they've bothered to think about anything coming out of their own mouths. Because thinking is hard 
and believing blindly is easy. Why do anything that makes your brain hurt? Well, maybe it hurts because you've let it atrophy from underuse. Did you ever think about that? Well, of course not, or they wouldn't be in the situation they're in, would they? The best they can do is to issue impotent threats against people who are just rolling on the floor laughing at their asinine beliefs and pretending that they hold the moral high ground. Too bad they don't care about the intellectual high ground, but they don't. And that's how we end up with stupid people like Greg Locke.